just landed after doing some really questionable things to the landing gear, uh, practicing crosswind landings. But to make it up, today we are going to work on a system to keep Evelyn warm in the winter. As you can tell, it is winter. There's no snow, but it is cold. So let me show you what I came up with. I'm not even sure if this is gonna work. And uh, that, that reminds me, it's probably a good time to say that I'm just a random guy on the internet. So if you end up doing this and it like burns down your plane, burns down your hangar, um, you, your cat gets sick, your wife leaves you because you spend all your time to hang her, that's on you, man. Like I, I'm just a random guy on the internet. So use this as entertainment only, okay? So let me show you what I got. So let's start off with this. This is a milk house heater. Got it from Menards. It's surprisingly and concerningly cheap. Got some duct work. This is a, well, you can just read what it is. Okay. So one side is round, one side is square. Then we got a reducer here. And we got a bunch of dryer hose tubing. Got way more of this than I'll need. So here's the plan. In here, we have an oil pan heater, okay? That's a stick-on oil pan heater. Here's the oil, okay, it's open. This is a switch-on um, phone-controlled power switch. So you can uh, turn different plugs on and off. So one plug is plugged into the oil heater up here. One is plugged into this heater up here. We also have a little stool because it's generally a good idea to have electrical stuff off the ground in case you have fuel vapors. Not that this place is really vapor tight, um, but so good good idea to lift stuff off the floor, okay? So we're gonna connect to that, through that, into that, put a blanket on top of that, and then uh, we'll talk about why we don't wanna have the plug for, um, for the oil pan heater plugged in all the time. Before we can do that, we need to do a little experiment to see how much power that actually draws. This has a 15 amp limit, okay? So the oil pan heater, I don't know its specifications. I know this is a 1300 watt heater, um, but we need to figure out how much power that oil pad heater drives. So here's how we're gonna do that. So the oil pad heater is plugged into that orange extension cord, which comes down here, it ends up here. I've plugged the extension cord into a line splitter. Notably, this is a 10X line splitter. Uh, when we plug that into the wall, we can then use a clamp amp meter, like so, to measure how many amps it's pulling. So we'll start on the 200 amp setting. So this says 12.7 uh, amps. Now, like I said, this is a 10X, so it actually amplifies whatever amperage is going through times 10. So in reality, it's 1.2 amps. Um, we'll let this run for a little bit. I suspect, actually, I don't know if it has a thermostat or not. Um, the oil's hot right now, but it's still putting 1.2 amps through it. So um, I think it's fair to assume that it doesn't have a thermostat, otherwise it'd be off right now. So originally I was thinking of screwing this directly into here um, because there are holes here that it'd be relatively easy to do, but I also want to have a little bit of offset space. So for whatever reason, this was blocked, all the hot air wouldn't, you know, force in there. It, it could have a little escape. So I'm actually just going to use these tabs and bend those um, around it to make it fit that way. And then we'll use some tape to seal it up. All right, so it is two degrees outside. Um, actually, it's minus two, my bad. Um, it's minus two. I uh, am gonna show you how well this cowling heating system works. I got a thermal camera, so we're gonna look at it through the infrared spectrum as well. 
Um, on my drive up, so I live about 20 minutes away, I toggled on the oil pan heater as well, so that can start up. I don't run that all the time. I only run that if I know for sure I'm going flying. Um, the thermostat is set for 50 degrees lower, 70 degrees upper. So anytime the temperature drops below 50 degrees, the space heater kicks on, heats up that cowling space. When it reaches 70, if in some cases it reaches 70, it turns off again, then it cools down, hits 50, turns back on. Day like today, it's pretty much running non-stop. Um, there's enough heat loss where it never reaches that 70 degrees, but it's a nice 60 degrees in there right now. Remember the um, unit itself, the switch on unit, sits lower in the cowling. So I'm really curious um, to see what the actual temperatures are of the engine block. So that's why I brought the thermal camera so we can measure that. I'm also curious whether or not we have a lot of heat loss through the prop. Um, some people say that you need a prop cover because the prop is gonna conduct heat out of the crank and this fit into the air. So lots of uh, cool little answers we're gonna get today and I'm excited to geek out. Um, let's, uh, I don't wanna go outside, but let's go outside and check it out and see what we got. So here are the components. We got the moving blanket, which I'm gonna leave on for now. Milk house heater is what that's called. Some ducting running up in the engine. And then there's an oil pan heater as well, which you guys should be familiar with. Ooh, it's warm in here. Um, that is the duct from the space heater. So that's being directed underneath the cylinder heads here. And all of that is kind of insulated with a blanket. Then up here is the switch unit. So the temperature readings in the app are from here. And this is reading 64 degrees. Um, you can see this is pretty low. I'm hoping as the heat rises, it's warmer up here. And we actually are showing an oil temp. Oil temp probe is up here in the engine. It's not in the oil pan. So if we're showing oil temperature, it means the engine block, that little bit of oil that's in the engine is actually warm. So that's good. So let's take a look at the thermal imaging. You might notice right off the bat that the upper half of the cowling is warm and the lower half is cold. Why is that? Well, the upper half is painted, the lower half is bare aluminum. With imaging like this, um, when something's reflective, it really just reflects the background. So it's reflecting the hangar floor in this case. The painted parts are actually emitting heat. So if you see something that's really cold, like the landing gear uh, leg, that's because it's bare aluminum, it's just reflecting the background. Now, this is good, We're, we have heat. We have heat in the engine. Um, right off the bat, I noticed that the front cylinder is warmer than the back cylinder. That would have to be because that duct is aimed forward more. So it, it's hitting more heat uh, in the front and the back. There's the oil sump, which is glowing, thanks to that pad heater that's on there. Um, here's a better shot, that white hot spots, the actual heater itself. Uh, you can see the duct kind of in the bottom aiming forward. On the other side of the engine, we see that the left side is colder because the heat is coming in on the right side. Uh, the crankcase is still in the mid 50s. These cylinders are in the high 40s. The oil filter housing is also in the high 40s. And again, it's zero degrees outside. I'm way happy with that. Um, you can really see the uh, intake ducts are nice and warm. The carburetor is nice and warm. All of that is gonna help with atomizing fuel to get starting easier. Again, you see the oil sump, way hot. That's only 30 minutes of running that heater, so there really is no reason to run that nonstop. This is looking down the fill tube, so that's the oil in there at 120-ish degrees. Again, 20 minutes of heat on that is excellent. One of the nice side effects I found too is that there's actually heat leaking into the cabin. So you can see the instrument panel is nice and warm. Uh, it's, it's only about 30 to 40 degrees, but every little bit helps. You see that white hot spot in the bottom? Um, that's the heat inlet. So there, there's heat coming in and, and I'm guessing there's some heat conducting through the panel. All right, we're gonna take the blanket off here. Thank you for having done your job so well. I'm actually gonna put this in the plane. You never know when you might need a blanket in a plane. 
And now we're ready to push out and uh, warm her up. Got a little snow. I gotta do this two-handed. So let's review the cold start procedure. We're gonna have uh, throttle at idle. Then we're gonna turn the prop by hand, suck some fuel into the cylinder heads. Then we will prime the cylinders, magnetos on, start. And we're gonna try and do that while the engine is still warm. So not a lot of filming, just gonna make sure everything starts up fine. So after letting the engine warm up a little bit, doing pre-flight, run up, control check, went for a short low flight to see how the airplane behaves. Um, as I suspected, the bigger issue really is keeping the oil temperatures up. I can heat it as much as I want. Once we start flying at 100 miles an hour through zero degree air, guess what? The oil gets cold again. So um, I'm gonna experiment with maybe closing up a little bit more air intakes to be able to maintain a higher temperature. But other than that, the airplane flew great. It started up easy. And um, this setup allows me to continue enjoying flying when it's really cold, but as you can see, it's still really beautiful. So, thanks so much for watching. Hope this was helpful. Subscribe if you haven't already, and uh, we'll see you in the next video.